More than 30 years after it first made headlines with its stunning images of Jupiter, Saturn, and their moons, Voyager 1 has discovered another surprise discovery, a previously unknown region near the solar system's outskirts. What shocking truth has the Voyager uncovered? When Voyager 1's batteries die, what will happen to it? Stay tuned. In this video, we'll cover all you need to know. Let's check out what Voyager just made a new discovery at the edge of our solar system. Don't pass up any opportunities if you like what you see please subscribe to The Future Space. Then, let's not waste any more time and get down to the video. It was previously believed that the NASA probe had already traversed the heliopause, the boundary between the solar wind and interstellar space. Stamatios Krimigas, a solar physicist at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory in Laurel, Maryland, and leader of the team that operates Voyager's low-energy charged particle instrument, explained that the discovery of yet another district at the edge of our cosmic neighborhood came as a complete surprise. The newly discovered region was described as a magnetic highway by Kremigas and former Jet Propulsion Laboratory Director Edward Stone to reporters at the American Geophysical Union meeting in San Francisco. The heliosphere is the bubble around the solar system. NASA scientists predicted in September that Voyager 1 could leave the solar system by the end of the year. Scientists predicted that when the spacecraft approached heliopause, it would pick up fewer particles of solar wind and a greater number of cosmic rays streaming in from beyond our solar system. They also anticipated a reversal in the direction of the magnetic field. Since late July, cosmic rays have increased in intensity while solar wind particles have weakened by a factor of a thousand. Simply looking at particle data would have led us to the conclusion that we're out. This is our last goodbye to the solar system. Leonard Berlaga, who works on the Voyager magnetometer team at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, said that while they could tell the strength of the magnetic field had grown, their instruments never observed the expected change in the field's direction. Therefore, there's no proof we've entered interstellar space, as he put it. Instead, the highway zone seems to allow particles from within the heliosphere to escape into interstellar space while letting particles from the outside flow in. This is because the highway region is formed by a magnetic field originating from the southern hemisphere of the sun. However, space physicist Gary Zank from the University of Alabama in Huntsville remained skeptical that Voyager 1 was still within the solar system and predicted that it would take many months to determine whether or not the probe had passed the heliopause. This barrier is predicted to take on a variety of appearances depending on the theoretical model used. Voyager, as usual, shows a remarkable ability to provide observations that imply it would be lovely for the theory and the data to agree to all at once, but that outcome is by no means guaranteed. According to NASA, Voyager 1 is the farthest human-made object from the Sun at a distance of around 11 billion miles. Voyager 2 is its sister spacecraft and is currently roughly 9 billion kilometers from the Sun. They are the granddaddy of the active NASA fleet, having been launched back in 1977. Their scientific equipment, powered by radioactive plutonium-238, will begin shutting down in 2020 and be completely deactivated by 2025. Before that time, the Voyagers should have crossed the heliopause. According to Stone, who is still active as a Voyager project scientist at Caltech, some NASA scientists estimate that the magnetic highway is between 5 and 10 astronomical units thick. This is the same as saying that the magnetic highway is between 5 and 10 times the distance from Earth to the Sun. Two or three years to pass the region if their calculations are correct for Voyager 1. Stone emphasized that since NASA had not foreseen the existence of the highway, it was impossible to know with any certainty when the spacecraft would exit the solar system or what it would find on the other side of the bubble. Stone insisted that the magnetic field's direction change was still inevitable. However, he did say that he anticipated some aspects to be kept secret. How about we have a conversation about Voyager 2? At nearly four decades into its journey, Voyager 2 is making scientific discoveries as it enters interstellar space. Take a moment to think about NASA's Voyager probes if you've ever had a day that seemed endless. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 have been exploring exploring the cosmos and uncovering the secrets of our solar system since their launch in 1977. They have sent us a wealth of information about the cosmos in that period. Both probes have now entered interstellar space well beyond the orbit of the farthest known planet. Wonderful voyage indeed! It began with the launch of two spacecraft in 1977 to explore Jupiter and Saturn, and everything after that has been stepwise as our adventure has extended deeper and deeper into space. On Monday, Stone and colleagues published a collection of five new research papers in Nature Astronomy, reporting the first data from Voyager 2's solar system exit, illuminating novel features at the edge of interstellar space. The results show that on November 5, 2018, at a distance of 119 AU, Voyager 2 formally entered interstellar space. In these few papers, researchers analyzed the data collected by the spacecraft as it left the solar system. The cosmic ray, plasma density, 
density, charged particle, and magnetic field variations were all measured by its onboard instrumentation. The heliosphere is a bubble of supersonic solar wind that surrounds the solar system, and since Voyager 2 passed through the boundary at a different position than Voyager 1, scientists now have a better understanding of the similarities and differences between the heliosphere and the interstellar medium. Almost all of the interstellar gas, dust, and cosmic rays are prevented from entering the solar system by the bubble. Voyager 1 was able to take precise readings of the cosmological processes occurring within the heliosphere as it passed through the helio sheath seven years ago. Heliopause is the boundary between interstellar plasma and plasma from the solar wind. Since the heliopause had previously only been measured once, astronomers were eager to see how Voyager 2's fresh observations compared. While the two spacecraft crossed the heliopause at different locations and at different times, six years apart, the data suggests that the distance to do so is remarkably consistent. Similarities in density between the two media are also striking. But the heliopause itself is built a little bit differently. Unfortunately, Voyager 1's plasma instrument malfunctioned before it began the journey, so it couldn't know for sure when the solar wind's plasma gave way to the cooler interstellar material. Yet, the identical instrument carried by Voyager 2 is still operational, giving scientists their first opportunity to detect plasma in interstellar space. The magnetic field of interstellar space and cosmic rays both pierced the barrier during Voyager 1's passage, leaving it looking a bit chaotic. However, Voyager 2 discovered more clearly stratified heliopause where it appeared that infiltration was less of a problem. After Voyager 2 passed through the barrier, it discovered evidence of charged particles escaping into interstellar space. According to Stamatios Kremigas, lead scientist on Voyager 2's low-energy charged particle experiment, the passage by Voyager 2 was exceedingly leaky. That is to say, at a galactic distance of up to a billion miles upstream, solar bubble material was leaking downstream. That's not what happened with Voyager 1, for sure. So what might have triggered these modifications? That has not been determined. Some have speculated that discrepancies, and maybe even the geometry of the solar system itself, could be influenced by solar activity. Regrettably, no other returning spacecraft will be able to address the unanswered questions about helium pause. In early 2019, NASA's New Horizons visited the farthest planet from Earth, although it is not projected to have enough fuel to travel to the solar system's rim. Despite the two Voyager probe's best efforts, over the past 42 years, the plutonium-238 nuclear fuel that powers them is slowly losing its heat. Expert astronomers estimate that the probes will be retired for good in around five years. They should be able to conduct additional interstellar measurements till then. In addition, what comes next? They should take it easy for a while. Both Voyagers will survive long after Earth has been forgotten. They've been on their galactic orbits for at least 5 billion years. Moreover, the odds of them colliding with anything are extremely slim. Do you think Voyager 1 will last forever, friends? If there's anything more you'd like to share, please do so in the section provided below. We hope the video was entertaining. The patronage of our audience is essential to our success. To that end, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more incredible critiques.